Coming up, I take a look at the Chameleon 4020 fan dipole antenna. Is this something you may want to add to your uh, portable field kit? Well, we'll take a look at that on the next episode of Ham Radio Q&A. Hi, I'm Michael, KB9VBR, your host for Ham Radio q and I'm on a mission to inspire and educate the amateur radio community. If this interests you, then uh, like and subscribe for more of that kind of content, or help keep the mission alive by supporting us over on Patreon. Recently, the folks at Chameleon Antenna sent me uh, this unit to review. It's the Chameleon CHA 4020 FD, or fan dipole antenna. Well, Chameleon did send me a, a product for, for a review. Uh, they didn't tell me what to say, so the opinions in this video are of my own. Starting off, what is a fan dipole antenna? Well, it's a multi-band antenna with multiple antenna elements leaving the center uh, connector in a parallel fashion. Each antenna element is tuned for a particular frequency, so a fan dipole is really considered a resonant antenna. Uh, the, the concept is, uh, with fan dipole antennas, is that RF energy will radiate from the element that has the uh, the impedance that matches you know, an input impedance that matches the uh, feed point. For example, if you're transmitting on the 20 meter band, and the input impedance of the 40 meter element will be much higher than the 20 meter element. So the RF energy will radiate from the 20 meter element. And, uh, the vi and, and conversely, the opposite is true. If you're transmitting on 40 meters, the RF energy is gonna radiate from the 40 meter element and not the 20 meter element where the input impedance is much higher. You know, this is a very simple definition, but it's good enough to explain how the fan dipole works. So enter the Chameleon 4020 FD. This is a resonant antenna that will work on the 20, 40 and 20 meter bands without a tuner. And then also with a wide ranging tuner, give you uh, coverage on 17, 15, 12 and 10 meters. Chameleon designed this uh, to be a portable antenna. So the elements are made out of their uh, 20 gauge Kevlar clad PTFE wire. Um, and it's stored on these convenient uh, wire winders. This is typical uh, classic chameleon construction. So what do you get in a package? Well, the uh, 4020 FD comes with the center connector, which is a one-to-one -one current ballon, uh, two elements of 33 feet each in a uh, copper clad Kevlar PTFE wire, and uh, two elements 17 feet in length each of the same type of wire material. All four of these elements are um, integrated on a plastic uh, wire winder. And they also supply uh, four of these rubber uh, bongo ties. And we'll talk a little bit more about these in a little bit. Now, coax is not included, uh, with, when neither is rope. So what you're gonna need is an appropriate length of coaxial cable. And you're also gonna need some rope, uh, 50 feet of a, of a lightweight uh, line for uh, deploying the antenna in a tree and, and hoisting it up. And then four uh, 25 feet lengths of lightweight line, like paracord or something like that, for securing the ends of the elements. Setup is pretty straightforward. Uh, the great thing about Chameleon is they provide a comprehensive user's guide for all of their products. Uh, you can download that user's guide from their website so you can always preview it before purchasing the antenna. And it's really helpful in properly uh, deploying, using, and uh, recovering the antenna. I give them very high marks uh, for their excellent documentation. The manual states that it's gonna take two people approximately one hour to uh, deploy this antenna. Now, it's certainly easier to put the antenna up if you've got a, if you've got a helper along, but I was able to uh, put, uh, deploy the antenna in about 25 minutes, and then it took me about another 15 minutes to make the tuning and final adjustments to it. So, so figure about approximately 40 to 60 minutes of, um, from start to get on the air time. To deploy the antenna, first attach the elements to the connectors on the sides of the ballon. The elements are gonna have a little uh, spade connector to do that. Uh, they also have a carabiner about six inches away um, to secure the element to the uh, top loop of the, um, 
uh, of the center connector in order to provide strain relief for the elements. Uh, you'll want uh, the 40 meter in element on top and the, and the shorter 20 meter element uh, uh, below it. Next, uh, find your center find a proper center support for your antenna. Uh, if you're going to be using a tree, uh, get a rope in it about 25 or 30 feet in the air. Then spread out the elements, connect the coax to the ballon, and tie the ba and tie the ballon uh, to the rope. Uh, hoist the ballon in, in using care not to let the elements tangle. Now this is the part where a, a second person is really helpful. Finally, attach ropes to the wire winders on each of the elements and secure them to nearby trees. I put the antenna up in, uh, in an inverted V formation, uh, so I usually tie off the 40 meter element at about six or seven feet high and the 20 meter element about a, a foot or so below it. To recover the antenna, uh, just reverse the process. Uh, first, lower the ballon, then disconnect um, all of the uh, everything and wind up the wires and the rope. In testing the antenna, uh, the first thing I did was connect it to my Rig Expert Stick Antenna Analyzer. Uh, Chameleon states in her documentation that the antenna is resonant at about 7.1 MHz on the 40 meter band and 14.3 MHz on the 20 meter band. I received similar results on my analyzer. Uh, the resonant point on 20 meters was roughly at 14.3 MHz, give or take. Uh, but on the 40 meter band, it was much lower and I, f I found uh, in, in, in about every time I've, I've launched, deployed this antenna that the resonant point was at about 7.0 megahertz. Uh, while I could, you know, use it without a tuner on a 40 meter band, uh, the SWR was about 2 to 1 at the upper end of the band, so um, you're going to want to make a little bit of adjustments if you're planning to use this antenna on the phone bands. And that's where these little bongo ties really come in handy. Uh, you can shorten the antenna by uh, wrapping the wire around the, uh, the wire winder sort of to, to kind of tighten it up and, and shorten it. Uh, when, when you're doing that, you're sort of creating a loop or an inductance and the RF energy is not going to pass that point. So doing that and then securing it, you know, by wrapping this bongo tie around the wire winder will um, electri electrically shorten your antenna. One wrap was enough to move the resonant point up to about 7.2-ish uh, megahertz, and I had um, very good SWR so I could use the antenna without a tuner on the 40 meter band. Moving on to performance, on-air testing of an antenna can be uh, very subjective, and it's really dependent on the, um, you know, the band conditions, the power output, how the antenna was installed, and what the receiving station is, is picking up. You know, I could have done an A-B test with a, similar, with, a, with a different style of antenna, but out in the field that becomes really challenging. So instead I decided that um, I'm not going to wait the review on on-air performance, uh, but just kind of give you all a rough indicator of how the, um, the antenna was working at a particular point in time. I found that I did receive um, very good signal reports uh, using the fan dipole antenna. I could work stations that sounded weak to me and uh, they came back to me with um, what I felt were adequate or very good signal reports. I did two parks on the air activations uh, with this antenna. Uh, the first one was at the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore and uh, you'll find that video on my recent uh, Uper vacation. I'll put a link to that uh, video down in the video description below if you want to hear some on-air uh, responses to, uh, for this antenna. I also have another, I did another activation up near um, the Apostle Islands in Lake Superior on the Shawamigan Bay and um, also uh, had a very good signal report with that antenna. With both those activations, in about an hour, hour and a half's time, I, I garnered about 50 or so contacts, equally split between 40 and 20 meters, and the antenna performed quite well, uh, ex excellent performance, I felt, uh, for daytime band conditions in that, in that particular, particular time. So here's my, re my rating on the Chameleon uh, 4020 a fan dipole antenna. On build construction and quality, I'm going to give this a 9. Uh, this is a very solid and robustly constructed antenna. It packs down well into a relatively small case. 
Its total weight is approximately 2.2 pounds. So I, I think this is a, uh, a, a very valid uh, contender for a portable field kit. Tip. Kit. In setup and teardown, I'm going to give this a six. Uh, this is not the easiest antenna to deploy, uh, nor it is the fastest antenna for portable operation. Uh, the biggest problem is is keeping the uh, the elements from tangling as you're as you're lifting them into the air. Uh, the other problem is is that while the wire is is quite supple and easy to work with, it does have a tendency to kink. So you have to be careful, a little bit careful when you're winding and unwinding it so, so that the element wire isn't, isn't kinking. Out of the box operation. Uh, what does it take to get on the air after the setup? And I'm gonna give that an eight. The antenna uh, is resonant on the phone portion of 20 meters, uh, but it was, its resonant was, was low on the 40 meter band. So I, that means in most situations, I'm either gonna have to use an antenna tuner to bring it up into tune for the uh, phone portion of the band, or I'm gonna need to um, shorten and adjust the elements a little bit. And Chameleon does give you a procedure on shortening the elements, but out of the box, we're gonna give that an eight. So, who is this antenna good for? Well, it's a, it's a great antenna if you're needing something for a temporary installation, a portable use, say like a campsite or emergency communications. Uh, parks on the air activations, I think this would be a perfect antenna for that. Uh, 40 and 20 meters is very popular for parks on the air. So it's, uh, it's a great choice if you're looking for a wire antenna for uh, parks on the air. I probably wouldn't use it for a permanent installation just because it's not really designed for that, but instead look for a more robust uh, antenna for, for permanent use. So my final words. Um, in the past, I've used a uh, link dipole antenna for a portable use, and uh, I found that you know, the advantage of a link dipole antenna is that you've got, you've got two elements and then to uh, switch between one band or the other, you just disengage or engage uh, portions of the elements to make them resonant uh, for particular frequencies. The nice thing about the link dipole is that it's easier to deploy than a fan dipole because you've got less wire to work with. Uh, the downside on a link dipole and the advantage of a fan dipole is that fan dipoles, you don't have to go out, lower the antenna and, and switch, out, switch in and switch out the elements for resonance, you know, it's already built into the antenna. Um, so I, I found, you know, I, I, like the, um, I like the ease of setup of the link dipole, but I really appreciated the convenience of the fan dipole, especially when uh, the weather conditions were such as I didn't really want to go outside and um, make those adjustments to change bands. Uh, what would be nice, I think that if, if Chameleon would, would provide an add-on kit, if, they, if you could get, uh, say, a, short, a set of shortened 75 meter elements for this antenna, that would be awesome, uh, especially for emergency communications, Aries Races use, because then you would have um, a, a wire antenna method for 75 meter NVIS communications. So think about that, Chameleon. And with that, uh, that's my review of the Chameleon uh, CHA 4020FD, their fan dipole uh, portable antenna. And do you have any questions or comments about this antenna? Uh, please leave them in, the, in the, the comments below. I'll filter through them, try to answer them the best I can. And who knows, maybe yours will end up on our next Your Questions Answered video. But for more uh, articles and information and J-Pole antennas for sale, check out my website at www.jpole-antenna.com. Support of this channel drives the production of future videos. You can do that by uh, hitting like and subscribe and also checking us out on Patreon. Patrons help keep the mission alive and I'm eternally grateful to them. Well, that's it for this time. I'm Michael, KB9 VBR. Have a great day and 73.